All right, next story. You've probably heard of lateral thinking, but have you heard of lateral reading? The former teaches highly effective creative approaches to problem solving. The latter, a lot like pre-bunking, teaches you how to be stupid, which is why lateral reading is part of MediaWise's media literacy program. Not only that, lateral reading, I've learned, is the technique used by professional fact-checkers, which once you hear, explains a lot. But finally, we get to learn how these pro fact-checkers, what method it is they use to do their good work. Now, you recall Alex from the previous article, the head of MediaWise's media literacy program, who was commenting on how great he thought Google's pre-bunking initiative is. Well, we're going to learn how to lateral read, how it works, and how it too can help inoculate us from mis- and disinfo from one of his MediaWise media literacy course lessons, like one they actually use in schools. Like in the video that I'm going to show you, in the description, it says, attention, This fact check is featured in a free one-hour lesson plan. The lesson is available through PBS Learning Media and includes a lesson summary and a handout, among other resources. MediaWise has this YouTube channel full of these videos where they have a bunch of kids teaching other kids, and I'm sure some adults who get directed to it as well, all of these ways to, to inoculate themselves from misinformation. So this lesson that this 16-year-old who looks 12 is going to be teaching us is how to fact-check a story just like the pros do it using this lateral reading technique. And the story that he's fact-checking is revealed in the video's title, which is, No, DeMar Hamlin's mid-game collapse was not caused by the COVID-19 vaccine. Pretty definitive statement there by a child who I'm not sure how he could be so certain of this. I should say in the description area, it says attention teachers, not just attention. So this, they definitely want your kids learning this media literacy training. Okay, in this first clip, the kid tells you what to expect from this video and the series of videos just to give you a little bit of context on what we're learning here. Hi everyone, this is Sahil and welcome back to another episode of Is This Legit? A series brought to you by MediaWise and PBS Student Reporting Labs where we fact check viral misinformation online and teach you ways to do it on your own. Okay, great. So this kid's a fact checker. Hope he doesn't walk around calling himself that because he'll probably never get a girlfriend if he does. Next, he introduces us to the claim that he is fact checking. It was really scary when Buffalo Bill safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed in the middle of an NFL game. Thankfully, doctors say he's doing well and hanging with his friends and teammates. But that hasn't stopped a lot of people from pushing theories about what caused this unexpected condition. On Instagram, one person wrote, Pfizer kills a black man on live television and then tells us that we're not supposed to talk about it. Whoa, this person is saying that the COVID vaccine was the cause for Hamlin's collapse? Time to find out, is this legit? And who better to help us find out if this claim is legit than a fact-checking child? They should have seen if MC Hammer could have helped them out. He could have done a little bit of a, a play on his song, but he might have turned them down. Don't know what his view on the vaccine is. It's interesting that he's able to fact check something that there's not enough publicly available information to really fact check, at least the way that, that they're claiming to do it. I mean, the kid admits at some point in this video, I don't know if it's included in a clip, that DeMar, his vaccine status is not known to the public, w- which let's be honest, unless this is some sort of setup, I think it's pretty safe to assume that he's probably vaccinated because they would have said otherwise to try and make the conspiracy theorist look bad. But ignoring the obvious here, you can't definitively say that the vaccine played no role if you don't know if he's been vaccinated. So since he doesn't have that information, the kid uses what these people do every time. And he starts by citing the experts. Remember the key word here, experts think his collapse is most likely linked to a condition called commodio cordis. That's when a blow to the chest delivered at exactly the right place at exactly the right time can cause a dangerous heart arrhythmia or cardiac arrest. He tells us what the keyword experts say. So he makes an appeal to authority, which in and of itself is not proof of anything. And I think the past few years have made that evidently clear. This is also the top bun of the truth sandwich technique 
that he's also demonstrating in this video, which is another inoculation technique they use to stupefy people and something Brian Stelter eats way too many of. Next, he presents the middle part of the truth sandwich by addressing the conspiracy theories and disinformation, and he throws a couple of examples to support his position our way. Unfortunately, COVID vaccine misinformation has become widespread. Tons of similar claims have been posted online saying that the vaccine causes athletes to drop dead on the field. One of the earliest claims was about soccer player Christian Eriksen, who collapsed on the field back in 2021. On social media, the post went viral saying it was caused by the COVID vaccine. But that theory was quickly debunked since he wasn't even vaccinated. This situation sparked a lot of other similar social media chatter. Vaccine disinformation also spread about Gilbert Cuomo, a gold medalist runner, and Frank Barrier, a French soccer player. But all of those claims have been repeatedly investigated and repeatedly debunked. To date, I'm not aware of a single COVID vaccine related cardiac complication in professional sports. Matthew Martinez, a sports cardiologist who works with the National Football League, National Basketball Association, National Hockey League, and Major League Soccer, told PolitiFact. So he gives us this evidence, which is anecdotal, that doesn't address the specific claim he's, quote, debunking, but merely points out three examples. He says conspiracy theorists have been wrong about their vaccine-related claims about athletes in the past, implying that because they were wrong in those instances, he says they were wrong, then they're wrong in every instance when they make similar claims. One problem here, though, is that only one of those examples are, are backed by evidence, which is the one where the guy was not actually vaccinated, that he says conspiracy theorists claim that the vaccine is what caused his either death or collapse. The other two, the kid just says they've been repeatedly debunked and investigated. That, 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 I'm sorry, that's not evidence when you just say that they've been debunked and you put PolitiFact up there. And then he cites one, ex one expert who worked in the NFL and NBA or something. That, this, this is illusionary debunking is, is what's going on here. Uh, I, I do want to take a step back and say, though, that first example that he used of Christian Erickson, the soccer player who he said wasn't vaccinated, and I looked him up, and apparently he wasn't vaccinated. I have no idea if that's true or not. I have no idea if people were claiming that this guy died of the vaccine or not. But let's say that there were people claiming that this guy died of the vaccine online, and that they did, and they are now using those claims to discredit all other claims made by all other conspiracy theorists. I think that that is why it's a good idea to be cautious and not quickly jump the gun and immediately claim that something was vaccine related when we see something like that, because that gives them this example that they can now use in these media literacy trainings to discredit everybody, discredit all of us, every claim we make in the future, every claim we've made in the past, and they can use it to manipulate and mind control children into being propaganda drones. Plus, if we instantly shout vaccine every time something we see something like that happen on television, then that makes it easy for them to be able to set something up and, and stage something knowing that a person might not be vaccinated, knowing what the reaction will be because the predictability of the reaction comes with that, and they can just set us up. And then after everybody makes the claims on social media, they can say, ha, 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 the person's not vaccinated, gotcha. If we are measured in our responses about it, skeptic, we're very skeptical, obviously, but if we're measured and we back our responses by evidence, then this cannot happen to us. We don't want to give them fuel to discredit us, especially in the, the media literacy lessons they teach to children. So at the end of that clip there, he cited the expert again, which he had already done at the beginning of his fact check. But as we know, there's experts on every side. So when do you know when to question the experts and, and when not to? And he helps us answer that question right here in this next clip. And now we're getting into this new technique of lateral reading. In just this past year, over 17,000 different COVID-related theories have spread online, many of which seem to quote scientific studies. So when should you question the expertise of experts? Take this Damar Hamlin post I mentioned earlier. When you see a jarring claim like this, ask yourself two questions. One, 
Does the writer have relevant expertise? In this case, Toby Rogers describes himself as a revolutionary and political economist, neither of which has anything to do with healthcare. And two. Okay, so that first one there, they just picked the the most random person on social media who they can say, see, this person has nothing to do with health. And as though Bill Gates has any expertise related to healthcare, yet we rely on him. He's like the foremost expert, apparently. So the reasoning here is, is highly flawed, to say the least. And two, what do the majority of scientists think about this claim? Okay, so when you see a claim that you aren't sure is true, MediaWise teaches a method of fact-checking that says, pose two questions about the claim, neither of which involve actually evaluating the content of the claim or, or evaluating any evidence in support of the claim. Don't even consider the claim is one takeaway lesson here that they're imparting. And the second lesson here seems to be that you prove whether or not something is true or false by finding out what the majority of scientists think about it. If most scientists believe it, then it must be true. This is a logical fallacy. It's called argumentative ad populum. Probably said that wrong, but that's what it's called. And they're trying to teach children to think in logical fallacies and make deceptive arguments without even knowing it. They want them to think that the content of a claim is unimportant and all that matters is doing the work of finding out what most scientists think, which the way that you find out what most scientists think and therefore prove your claim or debunk another claim is you use the technique of lateral reading. You can figure this out by doing what we call lateral reading. Do a keyword search, open many different tabs, and read laterally, find reliable sources, and compare the scientific reasoning across them all. You'll quickly find articles like these, all debunking this claim. Okay, so on screen, when he was saying that, the demonstration, he pulled up three tabs, side by side by side. We see them all next to each other. One is from the USA Today. Its fact check says no proof of link between Bill's player. Hamlin's cardiac arrest in the COVID-19 vaccine. Then there's a big red arrow pointing laterally to the next headline, which is from Pointer, the international fact-checking site, which says misinformation swirling online about the COVID-19 vaccine and DeMar Hamlin's collapse. Then there's another big red arrow pointing to the NPR headline that says how DeMar Hamlin's collapse fueled anti-vaccine conspiracy theorist. That's the technique of lateral reading, which apparently is a fact-checking technique where you open a bunch of mainstream news sources and you rapidly only read the headlines, all of which say basically the same thing. Listen to this. This is from the News Literacy Project talking about lateral reading. It says, Lateral reading helps you determine an author's credibility, intent, and biases by searching for articles on the same topic by other writers. That's what professional fact-checkers do. That's what it actually says. They're teaching people to not think for themselves, that you determine the answer not by thinking and looking at the content of the article, but by seeing what most of the other mainstream headlines say that people are accepting as truth just unquestionably. And the evidence to support that truth are the other headlines. It's circular reasoning, and it has no evaluation process whatsoever. They also say that fact-checkers read laterally as opposed to vertically leaving a site after a quick scan and opening up a new browser tab, multiple new browser tabs, in order to judge the credibility of the original site that they only scanned and did not read vertically. They tell people not to read vertically, to not read past the headline, to not actually read the argument being made and the evidence being presented. Yet at the same time, it's a known propaganda tactic that they use to put information that invalidates the claim of their propaganda headlines in the lower third of the article that is statistically proven to be the least read part of the article. They want it even less read. They don't want people finding any information that goes against their narrative. And what's even crazier is that the concept and term lateral reading was developed from research conducted by Stanford. Here's a quick clip from a video from their website telling people not to engage in actually reading articles, but to read laterally, stupefying themselves instead. Professional fact checkers approach the web differently. They understood that on the web, what you see is often not what you get. The web is treacherous territory and you can't let your eyes deceive you. Landing on an unfamiliar site, they didn't waste precious time engaged in close reading. Instead, they opened new tabs in their browser and read laterally. That's how fact checkers approach their fact checks. 
When they land on a non-mainstream site, they don't waste precious time engaged in close reading. Why would you do that? They instead just read a bunch of mainstream headlines and, and decide that that's the truth together. They don't even encourage them to read the full mainstream articles because, as I mentioned, they sometimes bury facts deep in the articles that completely undermine the propaganda claim made by the headline, what they want to impart in people's minds. That's what fact checkers do. So we now know that professional fact checkers are the dumbest people on the planet. And some more good news. A new study released by Gallup. I can't remember who it is. I think it's Gallup. Show that people recognize this fact. The headline says, Study shows striking number who believe news misinforms. Half of Americans in a recent survey indicated they believe national news organizations intend to mislead, misinform, or persuade the public to adopt a particular point of view through their reporting. Well, duh. Would have been better if that headline said, Study shows half of America now has correct perception of the news. The other half will come around. We're getting there. <laughs> 